Where are we? What happened? At night time. Is Ricky have bad dream? Look down. Look at all the stars. We're not on Bionis anymore. There's no land or sea either. Um, Ricky? Yeah. <laughs> what? What a bad time to get it. <laughs> this is random. I'll give you that. <laughs> Together, we march on to the light at the end of the tur tunnel. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, space. I suppose so. Hey everyone, welcome to the finale of Xenoblade Chronicles. Can't believe I'm saying that. In the last episode, we fell Dixon and put an end to what a what of a life he lived. Mm -hmm. But our bonds are stronger than ever after coming together and beating him. Now we march on in a place which should seem all too familiar with Shulk. This uh, this place right here can go it uh, can go it can go by many names. Some call it the passage of fate. Some call it just space. Mm -hmm. But in the game's actual code, it's actually called me memory space. And fun fact, you can't save. <laughs> so we have nothing left to, to lose. We've got to go forward. And starting off. We are met by fami familiar faces. Or should I say, spirits. You know what? No. Faces is more apropos this time around. Spirit Mum Car. Yep. We're having memories. Because it's called me me Memory Space. There isn't too much to talk, uh, talk about regarding these guys. They have the same stats, the same, the same attacks, and the same pa patterns as a... In last time, in last times we uh, we faced them, and they even come with their own exclusive song. So, so as well as well be quiet, and let you listen to it. That's one fell. We took we took revenge for Fiora on that one. And look, we're going by Saturn. Isn't that nice? Now, as we go on, though, I want to bring up our discussions about Dixon for a second. So, Alice, your thoughts as, as, as we enter? You mean, like, Dixon as a character, or as a villain, or...? Anything, really. Now, now that Dixon's gone. Well... Dixon, it's what after what after he shoots Shulk, it becomes really easy to hate him. It, mm -hmm. it, it he just makes himself that it's just that good in the way he, the way his voice after speaks and just I don't know, just you come to like him at first and you come to trust him, but then when he shoots Shulk, it's like I don't like you anymore. Go away. Dixon is a very complicated character for me because. I go through the same emotions as you mentioned, but before we get ahead of ourselves, Zord, it's similar to how we face him in Central Pit. Nothing different, ju I just add to higher level with higher stats. Nice job, but we mustn't be Me, careless. Dixon, is a complicated character, a character again. But I think one of the reasons, I think one of the main things I like to think of is that why. Now a lot of people go through the emotions on how he's just, you know. A plot twist, and for the sake of a, of a plot twist. For me, you have to think of why Dixon is a betrayed. And as we go forward, I want to let you know, the uh, the left you ahead of us, it's the same thing as Laura Fee's boss fight in the end of Bionis interior, just so no other thing is lost in there. As we travel through Bionis, we saw how, you know, there was a general care for Shulk. Mm -hmm. And even back in the marsh where he said he felt bad for to see and seeing these kids. Mm -hmm. And you never re re really hear Dixon go on about how Xander is the greatest, you know, and how he deserved this spot. Mm -hmm. You just you just go on the um, assumption that Xander gave him power and he's okay with it. 
why would Dixon need any power? Well, if you look, if you look deep enough, there's actually a lot of reasons on why. In the world building that we've seen late game, the spiders and the giants were at war with each other. And as you probably could tell, the giants slow, slowly died out and uh, the spiders took over. Mm -hmm. Dixon was probably one of the last giants alive. In an, in an, act, of des in an act of desperation, he took, Zan she, she took Zanon's offer. He, he, he even Dunban mentioned it himself. In the act of self-preservation, we, we commit acts of cow with us. Mm -hmm. So, whether that's something or not, I don't know. One, one little tidbit, however, is that Dixon actually actually has similar, a similar a, a similarities to one of Monolith's pre, pre, previous work. I'm not going to spoil it, but Dixon actually goes through similar character arcs and similar plot twists through Xenogears. So, a lot of people have mentioned that Z Xenoblade is a, spir a spiritual successor to Xenogears. This is probably one of the other reasons why. Oh no, it's just food for thought, and that's something that I really love. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I know, I know it's probably, I know it's probably going to be a bit, a, a, a bit iffy, but Dixon actually starts to like show jo Joni and talks highly of him. Maybe he's just one of the son. We'll never know. In influenced by Zanza. Cool. Possibly. Let's keep this up. It's beautiful. Is that a ball of water? So, you finally made it, Shulk. <gasps> it's you. What is it, Shulk? I cannot wait to see which path you choose. Let us meet again after you have made your choice. Ugh! Welcome, Shulk. That voice! It's Zanza! But he looks different. I had planned to use the body obtained from Shulk as a vessel in which to dwell for the next millennium. However, I came to possess a great and unexpected power. Maynith's Monado. Correct. In addition to my own Monado, which you kept safe for me, I was also able to obtain a second weapon which holds the power of creation. Now I possess all I desire. There is no longer any need for the life of Bionis. I must thank you indeed, Shulk. You were of more use to me than any of my disciples. Now that I have the Monados, I can forgive you your betrayal. Ha! You're gonna give him a reward? Precisely. I will have him serve as my new disciple. You will be granted eternal life and unimaginable strength. Death will be but a fleeting afterthought. Are you so arrogant to believe that the High Entia... No. All life on Bionis are nothing but your playthings! Playthings? Yes! You don't know how it feels to have slain my brethren after they are transformed into Telethia! What, what are you, are you talking, talking about? about? A Telethia is a High Entia's true form. I did not transform them, I returned them. The Telethia are mere cells from my body. I conferred intelligence upon them on a mistaken whim, creating a primitive life form, the High Entia. 
They enjoyed a brief existence as sentient beings. For that, they should be grateful. Huh. So this is the arrogance of a creator. As I planned, the life of Bionis existed simply to serve as my vessels and my food. Bionis is nothing more than an accumulation of their corpses and life energy. But though you feign omnipotence, the High Entia still confined you to Prison Island. That is how limited you are. Confined me? I was merely... resting there for a while. I was wounded in the battle with Maynard's vessel. I simply awaited the day when a new vessel, revealed to me in a vision, would be born. Until... I was born. Precisely. I intended to inhabit your body, and once again do battle with Maynard. However, I had no idea that I would defeat her so easily. Maynath. You did a great deed in granting me a new Monado. I will gladly take you as my new disciple. Shulk. Never! I don't want to be your vessel or your disciple. I just want to live my life as a Homs in a world without you. That is most regrettable. You could have entrusted all to me and attained peace. But perhaps the vision of mortals will ever remain limited. Using one's power to change the world, that is a right possessed only by gods. Is that why you laid waste to Maconis? Of course along with the beings called Machina, who followed Maynard. They had evolved and become insolent under her protection. <laughs> so you're saying us Homs are next in line, eh? You are correct. You yourselves have proven that Homs are a dangerous species. How unfortunate. I had a desire for friendship, but Granting intelligence to the lives I created was a mistake. A god should not long for friendship. You're wrong! Maynard chose to exist alongside us. She grew to consider us her friends. You should have accepted that. But what you were hoping for was not friendship. You wanted worthless slaves. Our lives as food. Just as I suspected, it appears that I was mistaken to grant free will. However, all will soon be over. The Telethia will exterminate all life on Bionis. I will then create a new world. Just as I have done many times before. We will not allow it. We cannot. We will stop you! And what a fight we have ahead of us. We're, we're choo and choosing this party? And my god. First off, I love this guy's design. He's a mix of his original design, Bionis, and also Maconis, depending on which Monado he holds. Which I absolutely love. First of all though, Summon Guardians, you can probably tell, he has, has a couple of friends joining him who look similar to like how he was in his ri ri original form. They have some of his attacks, but not all of them. They can still do a, co a, co a couple of hitting moves. First of all, Monado left, which is an ether attack and that can topple you on a second hit. Monado right is a physical attack and that can daze you. Yeah, this guy is an accumulation of all the things that we hit. Monado cross which is a frontal arc and, and can knock you back. However, obligatory revisions are the same. This time you have to do a QTE for them. Indeed. If you if you miss it, then you then, uh, then you don't see it coming. You can technically dodge it, but you just have less of an inkling on what's coming. 
But if you manage, if you manage, if you manage to stop a vision in time, well, this happens. Ricky dies. He's meant to have a, a line of dialogue, but luckily though, we stop it, and we dodge, and we dodge a chain attack, so... Lucky for us, I suppose. <laughs> Next up is Minado Recovery, which he, he just used, with, in which he recovers himself and gives his, his guardians a bit of a heal. Next up, Minado Fear, gives strength down and either down to all of us. Now, and lastly, Minato Brave. Strength up, Aether up. This guy likes to buff himself and give you every opportunity to bring you, you, uh, you down. But Shulk leveled up. You mere vessels dare to oppose the will of a god! Then I shall obliterate everything with my unimaginable power! If I couldn't love this design anymore, he's just added to it. <laughs> Still sticking with the party, but let's go. Maconis, Hyentia, and Bionis. My god, uh, my god, oh my god, do I, I, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, first of all, you can't, you can't not normally break him, but where uh, where our powers combined, he's still he's still going down. First of all, he has a brand new attack, World Construct, which um, yeah hits you hard. Physical down or physical protect craze, and also if you can tell his his port his port his portrait turns a brighter red. So lovely, a World Construct uh, on the left. That causes physical protect and and also summons two more guardians, which is a lovely in that in itself. Zanzer is King Dumbman, but we get an achievement, so it's all good. <laughs> Next up is Monado Combo. I've seen a lot of people struggle with this this attack, but. I think we'll see what happens. It's a frontal arc and I can knock you down. Uh, beyond an honest buster is a single attack where I can daze you. This one is Monado Bazooka. Uh, yeah, it's a town gauge and uh, it has a uh, pretty hefty mo multiplier of five times. Titan Bazooka. <laughs> yep. Pretty much similar to what Eggle used when he tried to take on Bionis, it just more so. Next one is Makanis Buster, with as, as can topple you. Next up is Black Hole, which can cause you pierce and also brings your talent gauge down. So be on, uh, so be, be on the lookout for, uh, for that one. Next up is Monado Shooter 9. Your talent art that combines you. But it hits six times. <laughs> this god does not mess around. He's everything that we hate, but everything we fought against along along the way. I just love this boss fight. I've I've already get ahead of, ahead of ourselves. I'm just gonna shut up for once and let you guys listen to such an awesome track. Thing. 
Visions. You no longer possess the Monado. I don't know. It comes from the bottom of my heart. It shows me my enemy. It reveals the future I must change. The future we see is not set in stone. There are infinite possibilities based on the paths we choose. You should be well aware of this notion. For that is how you have always existed. That is a right for gods, and gods only! Why should we care? What's important isn't whether you can see the future or not. It's the will to make a choice, and the strength to seize your destiny. Our time has come. Our destiny is our own! Can it be? It is not only you that is the right. Every living thing has the freedom to choose the path they walk. And that is the future. A third of Monado has appeared. How can this have happened? You are mere mortals! Mere mortals? We have a kick-ass new, new, a new sword. Third phase begins. His attacks stay the same. Oddly, however, his HP is dropped. That is only difference. <laughs> but now, like like before, we'll be quiet and let's listen to the track for a while. Choir going nuts. How can you not love this? And fun thing, everyone has something to fight for. Shulk's life as a Homs, Fiora, Fiora for Shulk, Ricky for family, Ryan for his future with Sharla, <laughs> and Melia for everything that she has to build up. But now, as you can see, we no longer have a QTE for visions for that guy. <laughs> who is completely and utterly irrelevant, let's be frank. But now, the environment's changed. We're no, long, no, no longer in a black void. We're here in a clear open sky. But, Alico Egil and Zanza are talked about prior. What's beyond, uh, what's beyond all this? Well, only one way to only one way to find out. Take out the guy who just took that away from uh, from us. There's no other there's no other way to describe this fight. It's divine, mm -hmm. utterly awesome. Vi vi visual effects, cutscenes, epic fights. Ah, it's just so awesome. But it's over. The future is ours to change. Mm -hmm. How? The, the power of a god cannot be overcome! Zanza. 
This is the providence of the world. Even gods are merely beings restricted to the limited power determined by providence. That power, although great, is not unlimited. That voice! Albus! How dare you disobey me! Ah! I am Monado. I was here at the beginning and will proclaim the end. But that... that's impossible. Shulk, it is time for you to choose. Does this world belong to Zanza, or does it belong to you? That is something I decided long ago! We use our power to fell a god, and then seize our destiny! All that I am is fading. The memory of a god's existence. Born from the chaos of creation, it is vanishing. Where am I? This is my home. Your home? Let's begin the experiment. Whose voice was that? It is Zanza. Before he became a god. When he was simply a man of flesh and blood. No! The results have not been confirmed! It's too dangerous! And that voice? It's Maynath. Ridiculous! It's perfectly safe. We are about to bear witness to the birth of a universe. Once, only a god could perform such a miracle. But today, mankind moves one step closer to the divine. simple curiosity. The curiosity of a single man that destroyed the universe and created a new one. A new universe. Your world was born. And so, two gods came into existence. Zanza and Maynath were lonely, so they created life in their own image. And that was how we were born. As the world advanced to each further stage, it was inherited by generations of different life forms. But over time, awareness of Zanza faded. Zanza feared this. In order to escape his own annihilation, he wished for a world in a perpetual cycle of destruction and recreation. Bionis being filled with life, and the Telethia coming to wipe it out. It was all the will of Zanza. It was. But the truth of the matter is that he longed for friendship. His future and our future. It might have been possible for them to coexist. Correct. However, that time has passed. The old god was defeated by the new god that he himself created. New god? Yes. That is why I appeared before you, Shulk. 
Alvis. What are you? I am the administrative computer of a phase transition experiment facility. But that will mean little to you. To you, I am a machine. That is my original form. Alvis? This world is stagnant. It has expired. Therefore, I will ask you, its new god. What is your wish? Will you allow the world to continue to stagnate? Or will you allow it to evolve to the next level? The choice is yours to make. I don't know. All I wanted to do was stop Zanza having his way, that's all. I cannot be a god. Too right. You're great and all, but there's no way you're a god. Everyone. Look, don't worry, Shulk. None of us want to be gods anyway. And I don't really know what the future holds, but we just want to live our life as it comes. Eating grub, sleeping, laughing, crying, sometimes arguing. Sounds all right? Yes, <laughs> he's right. And being with the ones we love, that's enough. Even so, we change little by little. Every day is a little different from the last. We do not know what the future will hold. More fun not knowing! Ricky want to have fun! Life's little surprises are what makes it great. We don't know what's going to happen. It's worrying sometimes, but it's also exciting. Don't you think? Yeah. Isn't that called progress? Aren't we all continuously evolving? I'm not sure we need a more dramatic change than that. Yeah. You're right. Little by little. Each day as it comes. That's how we should live. That's our world. Forgive my presumptuousness, but I recreated their personalities from your consciousness. Alvis, it sounds like you don't think I can make my own decisions. I'm supposed to be the god. Apologies. However, I have good reason. This world has little time remaining if left in this state. Have you made your decision? The choice is yours, creator. Tell me your decision for the future of this world. I won't decide. The future should be decided by each and every person in the world. And so, what I... No, what we wish for is... A world with no gods! Trying to kill me? Oh, not really. 
really sorry, Colonel. Sorry? What do you mean, sorry? Squat jumps around the entire colony. Fifty laps! Now! Please, Colonel! Ah, yes. That's excellent. So, you can take the materials to District 4. The restoration's coming along nicely. Thanks to Melia and Venea. The High Entia and Machina have some amazing technology. We are happy to help. To live alongside one another in harmony. After all, I have no doubt this is what Lady Maynath and Egil would have wanted. Hear, hear. And may it last forever. Dumban? Fiora? What is it? Have you seen Shulk? Oh, uh, he just left. I don't know where he's gone, but he was with Ryan and the others. Okay, thank you. Fiora? Yes? Uh... It's nothing. Good luck. If you're looking for Shulk, he is not here. Amazing! It's like you've got eyes in the back of your head. What were you looking at? The sea? Hmm? I wasn't looking at anything in particular. If anything, Fiora, I was thinking. Thinking about the future that awaits us all. Wow. You're so much more thoughtful than me. Really? I don't think so. I was just answering your question. But I know what you mean. You're right. We've been through a lot. Yes. We have. I am grateful to all of you. It is because I met you that I experienced so much. And it is the reason I am here now. Yes. We're happy you're here too. Thanks, Melia. For everything. I'm glad I met you. <laughs> and I you. Yeah. All most What's up with the water being so salty? Ryan, you're terrible at this. When was the last time you fished? <laughs> I'm bad fisherman. Ricky won't eat big fish. Give us a break. You try next time, Furble. Fishing is Ryan's job. Ricky's job is eating. Hang on a sec. Isn't Oka gonna have a massive go at you if you don't go back to her with 14 fish to feed all your little pond? Oh, Ricky forgot! Wifey pond very angry if not catch more fish! It ain't me she's gonna be angry with. No! Rain, catch fish! Catch fish oh. now! Oh, fish! <laughs> fish. <laughs> You are. The breeze feels so good. Mm. It does. That's all. Yeah. Really? Oh, I was thinking about growing it out, but... Hey, which do you prefer? Both, of course. Oh, come on. 
What am I supposed to say to that? Sorry. Okay. It's great like that. Don't change it. <sighs> I'd forgotten what it feels like to do this. I wonder what the future has in store for us. Who knows? I'm sure it will be full of ups and downs. Ups and downs? I don't know what the future holds. But that means I can imagine the possibilities. We can achieve anything we put our minds to. Yeah. You're right. Do you remember what the Monado, I mean Alvis, said to us the last time we saw him? Yes, of course. Shook. This new world is boundless. It is home to not only you, but many forms of life. I can see it. In this world, all life will walk towards the future, hand in hand. One day, I hope I can meet them all. The people of this endless world. Me too. We will. I know it. Mm -hmm. We'll meet them. And whatever happens, we'll face our future together. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the end of Xen Xenoblade Chronicles. Man, <laughs> every time I see I see the ending. Yeah. Goosebumps. And I'm not gonna lie. I'm kinda tearing up. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> I thought about it, but like, no, I'm recording. I need to keep my face I need to keep a straight face. I don't care. It's raw emotion and basically raw 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 emotion is one of the re reasons why we started doing this. And I say that for a reason. This game, it was a catalyst for a lot of things between us. Me, me, me and Alice, per, per, personally. This was the game that made us want to do YouTubing in the first place. Because we won, because we had such a raw reaction to the first time we played, we played this game, we wanted to give our, you know, our views, our opinions, because this game just made such a big impact to us. Yeah, we wanted to gush about it, but it was too late. We couldn't do anything. Yeah. This game is also special for us for other reasons. I've mentioned how I go on and on about how this game changed the way JRPGs act now. Because it combines so much. The combat system, unique dial... U unique aspects to it. World building, terrific music, terrific story, terrific characters. There's just too much to talk about in this credit sequence. But I think one of the main reasons why I love this game is because of what it did for us. It helped us in a lot of ways. For those who don't know, me and, a me and Alice are a long distance relationship. I'm from England and she's from America. Mm -hmm. When every time during our trips to see each other, we played this game. And whenever we had to leave each other, one of us would always leave this game behind for the other. <laughs> because it reminded us of each other and all the good times we have and what to look forward to. And I'm just going to extrapolate here because this is my my uh, my personal thing. But the distance between Shulk and Fiora, once Colony Nine happens, and the revelation of Prison Island, it creates a sort of long long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. Because Shulk realizes that you know he really cares about Fiora, but you know, as the old saying goes, you don't know what you have until it's gone. But just seeing Fiora, Fiora back, 
it makes it it makes you extra determined to get Fior Fiora back, so much so that he jumps off a goddamn fortress for Christ's sake. Yeah. <laughs> for me, that's motivation for how I felt every time I had to leave Alice. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get back to her. And vice versa. So this game gave us motivation to not give up. This game made such an impact that we actually had Xenoblade songs played at our wedding. Mm-hmm. That's how much we love and appreciate this game. <laughs> well, that's enough gushing about us. Let's talk about, how about the game before more tears fall from my eyes. How about that? <laughs> As I say, the voice acting in this game, some, some might call it corny, some might call it, you know, too British, but for me, it balances. Adam Howden does an amazing job of Shulk. And as Zanza. Yeah, Rufus Jones for just a small... of just, just a small part. But man, this game made such an impact for Monolith, for gaming, for the Wii, for JRPGs, for Nintendo. And after playing through 2, that last cutscene with Radamanthus, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Especially Alvis's role. But that was Z- Z- Xenoblade Chronicles. It had its ups and downs. It had its kick. But man, what a great game. Mm-hmm. This game sparked a movement. I want to say an entire nation. Operation Rainfall was spearheaded by this game. I will not... I'll not speak ill of Glass Story and Pandora's Tower, but Monolith made this game such a deep desire for fans that they pushed Nintendo, even when at some point Nintendo told fans, no, it's not worth the money. Mm-hmm. But the push kept on ongoing, and all, all, all three games came out. And from that, Xenoblade Chronicles has come such a big step from that. Shulk has appeared in Smash Brothers. Xenoblade Chronicles has got two sequels. Well, one, one, uh, one spin-off and one sequel. It's been given a port to the 3DS. It's getting a definitive edition. Which we will cover. Absolutely. Might be repetitive, but it's Xenoblade. We love it too much. We want to see what they've changed and what they've done. Because... We want we want to see that there's an or, an audience out there. But on that on that note, guys, you think we're done? But no, for me, I I I think there's an important little tidbit of of information that we want to present mm-hmm. regarding the last cutscene. Now. It was from a first-person perspective for the first part, because, you know, it wanted to reveal Fiora's new design and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now, on a first glance, you would think, oh, I guess all the talk of, of, you know, combining technologies, you know, and Leonardo having, you know, like, the miracle cure and whatnot for Fiora, Fiora, Fiora's magna body. Actually, that's not the case. And we'll get that to you a bit. Actually, you know what's good? Because X video's gone on long enough, so I don't want to bore, bore you even more. Mm-hmm. There's actually an explanation on why, but it's not in game. Now we have hinted at it a few times in in this series, especially, especially during late game. Thanks, game. Mm-hmm. But there, are, uh, there's actually a story on. On how Fior on how Fiora's return to her original form came to be. But it's not spoken. It's actually found in the official Xenoblade Monado archives. Oh only release in Japan and France. Luckily though, we have a copy. Amongst other things. <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't tell by this image right here. We're a big fan of Xenoblade Chronicles, just slightly, <laughs> just a bit. If this, if this long-winded rant or or already hasn't got that point across. <laughs> but yeah, if you are curious, we are going to make an extra video for that. So, 
if you guys would want to see how that played out, voiced by us two, mm-hmm. then by all means. And you know what? I'm kind of tempted because like, I, I'm an artist. Well, sort of. But I'm kind of tempted to make sketches to, to, to go along with our reading. If you want to, be <laughs> my guest. It's something that we want to get across because it's not a detail that I see spo- I've spoken about a hell of a lot. So, we all give that a shot. But on that though, guys, I think we'll call things there. A great end to a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. And in case you're wondering, yes, we are going to do No Game Plus. Maybe on a bit of a side note. It's not to the extent that we did for the uh, Xenoblade 2, but something. We'll, we'll, we'll do something with it. I know, but I'm just rambling here, guys, so I think, I think we'll call things there. So... But that, guys, not only thank you for watching this episode and this finale, but to anyone who's watched through this entire series, or even late viewers who've, co- who've come in recently, thank you. This series has been a year in the making. <laughs> it's been well worth it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's always great to go back to this game. I could play it over and over again and it still emotionally impact me. Yeah. But again, no. thank you guys for commenting, for just engaging, or anything really. Xenoblade's a great game and we're really happy to share it with everyone else. So, yeah, there's nothing else I can say except everyone. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Sincere, uh, sincerely, thank you. So, I'm not gonna do my usual outro because this game's en- en- ending deserves a lot more than that. So, on that note, guys, we'll see you next time. Where whoever something Xenoblade related, No Game Plus, the reading, or something entirely different, we don't know yet. <laughs> but to Shulk's point, that's the fun on of it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You don't know what the future holds. And we'll find out along with you all. So, wherever you guys are, whatever time zone you're at, thank you, and probably hope you all are well. Mm-hmm. And forge your own future, if I want to end this on a corny note. <laughs> But, nothing else to say, except, I have been Lightning. And I'm Alice. And we are Xenoblade Chronicles fans. And hopefully, along the way, we've made some new ones as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe, who knows, maybe maybe we made some new friends along the way. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you all, guys. We'll see you next time. I'm not crying. You're crying! <laughs> Why'd you put this jar of onions here? Uh, it was. It sounded good at the time! Oh god, let's end it. Wait, still going? Ah, oh, damn it!